Hi, welcome to our presentation today called The Mental Game. Now, in this presentation, we're going to be covering four intriguing attitudes of successful entrepreneurs. And you may not even want to call these attitudes. You might want to call them characteristics or traits or behaviors or even habits. But I thought it'd be cool to look at four things that are not necessarily covered in traditional business books or courses or seminars, things you may have seen before, but maybe didn't get all that much attention that I personally believe can help you. And if you implement even some of these ideas can maybe help you get to that next level in your business, even in your life. So let's actually take a look at what we're going to be covering here. Four mental attitudes of success. And the, the four goes as follows. The first one is successful entrepreneurs carry themselves with a sense of mission. Second is that they go beyond outcome-based goals and they focus on something a little bit different that we're going to be covering. Next, a big one is successful entrepreneurs are very proficient at separating emotion from intellect, especially when it comes to decision making. And then finally, when the pressure is on, the best entrepreneurs actually get stronger and they get better at what they do and how they, how they carry themselves. So let's dive into this with the first one here, which is the sense of mission. Now, you've probably noticed in your life, I've noticed this in mine, that you can usually bucket people or group them into two different categories, one of two categories. There's people who are of the achiever mentality versus there's other people who are just sort of the going through the motions type of people. And hopefully you're more of the achiever type, but I'm sure you've met people that fall into both of these categories. And I, I guess to say, I'm going to venture to say that some people are born more of, in more of this achiever mentality. They're, you know, they're highly driven people just by their very nature of their being. But there's other people who have become very successful who are not like that to begin with, but they were infused with a sense of mission, achievement, purpose, and so on. And they develop that characteristic over time. And what I'm saying here on the slide, the second point is that successful entrepreneurs choose to operate from a sense of purpose. They have a sense of mission behind everything that they do. And it's not even just from a business perspective here. This goes to and it bleeds through to every other area of their life. No matter what action or what goal there is they're pursuing, there's a sense of mission behind it. There is a drive. There's a purpose. There's a link back to um, their worth as a person and they're reaching their own potential to do more with their life. So there is this drive, the sense of mission that all successful entrepreneurs have. And the best way I can kind of get you to think this way or move you into this state of being or operation is uh, illustrating an example of a few years ago when I was at a shopping mall, uh, an experience I don't like to begin with. <laughs> I think it was holiday season, so I was shopping for my wife and getting some stuff done. Uh, and I go go back out to the car. I'm, I'm, I thought I was finished my activities for the day. Uh, to the horror that my wallet was missing. It, it wasn't in my pocket. I had no idea where I had left it. Uh, and instant shift, right? Suddenly a sense of mission to find this thing because I don't want to lose it and all, and all the horrible things that go with it. And at least they seem horrible at the surface. I'm sure there's worse things in life, but you know what I'm saying, right? You, you lose your wallet or something crazy happens, even if it's not a wallet related situation, you, you're on a sense of mission to find this thing. So without thinking, uh, you know, put the bags in the car and back into the mall I go to retrace my steps and figure out, you know, can I find it or am I out of luck here? And every single action has a purpose. Every movement I take, I'm, I'm walking, basically running, trying to solve this problem. Uh, and I'm not going to stop until I've done everything in my power to find it. Now, to give you the closure of the loop here, I did end up finding my wallet. I was super lucky that some good Samaritan happened to see my wallet had fallen out of my pocket, I guess, when I sat down on a bench for a drink. And they returned it to a... Um, a help desk or a lost and found or whatever. And thankfully, my wallet was returned to me, which was awesome. But I'll never forget this this instant shift. I was suddenly uh, on a mission to find the thing and I did everything in my power without stopping until I reached a logical conclusion there. And this is sort of the mode of operation for sex, successful entrepreneurs all of the time. So ask yourself this question. Do you run your business? Do you operate your business and the activities and projects inside of your business with that sense of purpose and mission because you are driven to achieve? Or are you, are you falling more and more into these type of people that are just going through the motions? You don't like it anymore. You've lost your passion for what you do. How do you get that back? What I'd like to do right now is suggest to you a 15 minute momentum builder. If you ever find yourself slipping out of the men uh, the achiever mentality, 
And that is uh, basically find anything in your life. It could be something as simple as tidying your office, you know, cleaning your desk. It could be something more sophisticated like completing a project or starting a project. Maybe you're a writer and you need to uh, begin the next chapter of your book. Whatever it may be for you, set an iPhone clock or a clock on your computer or even just whatever, some kind of timer, and 15 minutes you give yourself from 0 to 15 to do nothing but force yourself to operate from a sense of mission and purpose on whatever the task is that you choose to do. So you give yourself the goal and you say, for the next 15 minutes, I'm going to do everything in my power to get as deep and far and high quality into this uh, task as I possibly can to regain that sense of mission and purpose mentality that I want to operate with. And what you're going to find, this works very well for me and I've seen it work for others as well, is that at the end of the 15 minutes, you'll have gained so much momentum in what it is that you're doing that if you're not done, you're going to keep going until that particular task that you chose is finished. Uh, and if you are done, you'll feel so good about the achievement that you've just made that you'll want to move it, uh, move on to the next task. And this is where the power of momentum kicks in. I'm sure you've been on a momentum, a positive momentum swing at some point in your life and you realize how beneficial that can be for you. This is how you create momentum. This is how you generate a sense of mission in your life and ultimately in your, in your business. And you can become one of those successful entrepreneurs by developing this characteristic. All right, moving on to mindset number two, attitude number two, whatever you want to call it, uh, thinking beyond outcome-based goals. And this is very, very important. And it's also quite subtle if you're not paying attention. And the main thing I want to illustrate here is that successful entrepreneurs, people that are just generally successful in life are not only focused on external achievement. So external achievement isn't everything. It's not just about making that next sale. It's not just about achieving the next salary level or uh, receiving that promotion or completing the book or selling a certain number of units or whatever it may be for your business. Those things are important. They're measuring sticks. Uh, when you reach those outcome-based goals, you feel good about yourself. But if you get stuck in the loop of only measuring your worth and only feeling happy when the outcome-based goals are being achieved, you can lose yourself. And what's very important here is a second bullet point on the slide, which is the question you want to ask is the goal of what kind of person do I want to be or what kind of person do I want to become? So outcomes are great. But becoming goals are just as important. Successful entrepreneurs take time to not only set up the measuring sticks like their outcome-based goals financially, uh, maybe it's in their health and fitness world, but they also ask themselves, how do I want to be? What kind of person do I want to be with my family, with my employees, with my partners? Do I want to be an inspiring leader or do I want to be somebody that everyone lives in fear of? And of course, the people that want to be most successful want other people to be magnetized to them. And you'll notice that, that most successful entrepreneurs, whatever their personality type is, they could be, um, you know, just horribly introverted people, not horribly, introverted is fine, but they could be very, very introverted or extremely extroverted or somewhere in between. It doesn't really matter what the personality types are. They have this quality, this magnetic style about them. They're inspiring and generally the rest of us want to be around them because they're not just focused on the next goal, the next measuring stick. They're also focused on those who do I want to become type of questions. And another important thing to realize here is that those successful entrepreneurs that we're talking about realize that both things are possible. It's not an either or scenario. You don't have to uh, just focus all your life on saying, I'm going to be and just experience life as a being. Uh, you can also have a lot of worthy outcome-based goals that drive you while at the same time focusing on the kind of person you want to become. So it's very, very important. I encourage you to do this in your own success planning is in addition to whatever revenue targets you're setting, whatever health and fitness targets you're setting, maybe there's relationship goals that you're setting, that you set the becoming goals as well. How do you want to operate in certain situations? How do you want to treat other people? Uh, how do you want other people to treat you? And what would, what would you want other people to say about you if they were giving a speech about you, let's say, right? These are very, very important questions to ask. And this will move you from working on just outcomes to working on who you want to be and going beyond those outcome-based goals that control far too many of us and often makes us lose ourselves in the process. This is a very powerful characteristic. All right, now let's talk about number three, which is the idea of being able to separate emotion from intellect. Huge, huge concept, especially in the business world. 
Uh, I'm sure you've seen far too many business owners who will just fly off the deep end in a rage uh, for things that really aren't all that worth it. And they lose days or sometimes weeks of productivity because they're so wrapped up in the emotions of what's going on in their business instead of taking a step back uh, and handling the situation logically and from a more success-oriented perspective. The very first bullet on the slide I talk about or I'm referencing the concept of feelings versus principles. This comes from uh, a, a popular speaker named Eric Thomas. And he talks about how uh, he never listens to his feelings because his feelings will alter and change on a day by day or hour by hour, or even minute by minute basis. And sometimes he'll forget what his true principles are if he just responds and reacts to the world around him based on how he's feeling in the situation. So what this means is that Whenever he is involved in something going on, especially if it's an emotional situation, he takes a pause, he takes a step back, steps back and, and evaluates what his true principles are and makes his decisions how to react to situation based on what his principles dictate that he does versus how he's feeling in the moment. How well do you handle this in your business? How well do you handle a, a surge of, let's say, negative emotion uh, to allow, do you allow that to throw you off course? Uh, and become less productive and maybe uh, lash out at people, cause even further damage in your business? Or are you able to weather the storm and actually make educated, intellectual, uh, productive decisions despite the fact that you may be angry or upset or insulted or whatever else is going on with you right now? What I'd like to do at the moment is switch over to another recording that I've made from a previous program where I dive into this topic a little bit. And I'd just like you to think on this from the perspective of how well you're able to separate emotion from intellect. And hopefully some of this sticks with you and gives you something you can work with in your life. Let's go over there now. Family, friends, you name it. There's many times where we, we bump up against other people and our ability to examine and understand what's happening in the world and what other people are doing and what their intentions are, looking at that intelligently and separating what our emotions are telling us about that situation. Because sometimes by the nature of how our world works and how we work as humans, uh, our emotional reactions to situations may cloud our ability to actually effectively deal with what's going on and effectively examine what's really happening so that we can make an appropriate response. And I think this is best summed up in a book by Robert Greene called The 50th Law, which is all about the rapper 50 Cent and how he obtained his power. Phenomenal book. You should read it. But there's a quote in that book that I often have been looking at recently, and it says, when you look at people through the lens of your emotions, this will cloud what you see and make you misunderstand everything. Now, I really want you to think about that for a second. When you look at people through the lens of your emotions, it'll cloud what you see. How true is that? How often have you been in a situation where somebody may have been forceful or aggressive or accusing when they shouldn't be, and you immediately want to be defensive and explain yourself, or you're being attacked and they're trying to they're trying to pull you into a situation that you really don't even want to get into. Um, if you immediately go with the emotional reaction, you will lose that situation. I mean, you know it for sure. You're going to lose the situation. Whereas if you intelligently learn how to step back and almost interrupt that natural reaction that where emotion takes over and you take a moment to examine where they're coming from and what is causing that person to behave in this way. Usually it's some kind of fear. It's some kind of personal issue that's going on in their life and it's manifesting in their interaction with you. And so if you're able to take a, a pause, like a, I'm, t I'm talking like a half of a second pause to just interrupt your emotional reaction and give it a second and then examine what exactly is happening here, you might change the way you react and respond to a situation. And in some cases, it's going to be totally natural. But if you refuse to emotionally respond, but instead respond intellectually, get to the heart of the matter and, and maybe address the real issue of what's going on here. So as an example, I remember a, a couple of years ago, in one of the products I was involved in, we were selling basically a done-for-you type of service. And it was fairly cheap. I mean, let's say it was around $50. It wasn't like we were breaking the bank for people when they bought this thing from us. But for whatever reason, this guy that purchased uh, had an issue. He was trying to access his purchase, and there were problems with the system. First of all, he couldn't download his information. Then he tried to open up a support ticket, and something happened where um, our support team didn't get his message, and a series of things went wrong. 
And considering we had thousands of customers, this is going to happen from time to time, and some people are going to get angry. But this guy insisted that even though we were a legit company and there was real people and we were trying to solve this problem, once he got a hold of us and we realized what was wrong, we were trying to fix the problem. But because it took so long, he was convinced that we were scammers and we were out to steal his money. And no matter what we said, we we were just the horrible people. <laughs> and, and, and we were just out to steal everyone's money. And at that point, I kind of realized that if I try to explain myself or get defensive and say, well, look at us, look, I have my picture here and we have our website up. How could we possibly be scamming people and try to explain myself, uh, that's a losing battle. And so uh, when it came to this guy, I just eventually decided to not even go down that path. We just simply issued a refund. And he had no, no legs to stand on anymore because if we were trying to scam him, then why would we issue a refund? And we just walked away from the business altogether. We didn't try to right the situation. We didn't try to explain what went wrong or why it happened. We realized that there was no changing his mind. And all we could do was wash our hands clean of that situation and move on. And I handled it very transactionally. I was lucky in the situation because we had been dealing with thousands of customers and many, many support tickets. And I was sort of heading up how we were handling all this stuff. So I had seen my fair share. Now, if that had been my first interaction with a negative customer or a customer period, I probably would not have had the, the wherewithal to do that. I probably would have been sucked right down into that rat hole of defensiveness or arguing or getting into a heated battle or who knows what it would have been. But it would have ended poorly for me. Again, luckily, I had sort of been exposed to enough of these types of situations to know that emotion is absolutely the losing game here. And so I separated through it. I did not I did not examine this person through a clouded emotional lens. I separated the two. And here's the thing. This is kind of the important part of all of this. I'm not saying that you will not feel the emotion. And in fact, that's a, a big hiccup for a lot of people. You're still going to feel the emotions of defensiveness or of upset or of anger or of hurt when people are attacking you or coming at you in a way that you don't think is justified. And I want you to remember that feeling the emotions is not wrong. And in fact, you should come to expect it. But what you should also come to expect is your ability to interrupt the need to react emotionally and just react out of intelligence. Even if you feel the emotional hurt or defensiveness, you can still act in spite of that and act in a way that's more appropriate to winning in the situation. So that's the key thing here is to not uh, react to the emotions, but also don't judge yourself if you have the emotions. Even if you've dealt with the situation a hundred times, you still may not be able to turn those emotions off of feeling upset or angry or defensive because it's human nature. I mean, we, we want to make sure that people understand us and that we can explain ourselves, but doesn't mean you have to physically do it. You can make a more intellectual decision uh, while feeling those emotions. All right, let's move on to the fourth and final point here. And that is successful entrepreneurs are actually better and stronger when they're under pressure. And this is a tough concept for a lot of people to wrap their heads around. Most really successful entrepreneurs, especially as they're climbing the ladder, the pressure increases. So there's a higher demand. Their business is building. There's a bigger customer base. There's more, uh, there are more customers, partners, staff, you name it. The level of pressure in general at all levels increases. There's more demands on their time. Uh, there are more cash flow considerations. You can imagine all of the stuff that starts to happen. Here's one thing that I've noticed. Successful entrepreneurs, the ones that really take off to the next level, have literally trained themselves to respond positively to this type of pressure versus negatively. The, uh, a person that, that handles this negatively would see an increase in demand like this and immediately fold into a shell and say, oh my goodness, I can't handle this. There's too much coming at me. What am I going to do? Versus the successful entrepreneur has trained themselves to realize that an increased demand means an increased level of success in my business. It means an increased opportunity for me to be able to handle more. It's a higher capacity. And really what it is, the third point in the slide says it here clearly, it's a rite of passage for more success. You cannot obtain a higher level of success if you can't handle the current amount of stuff coming at you, the current amount of pressures coming at you. So what I've noticed is the most successful entrepreneurs can, can withstand incredible amounts of pressure because they've trained themselves to actually decompress and become calm even when the situation appears to be chaotic and hectic around them. So this involves, there's a number of different strategies that come into play here, but this involves a lot of self-control, self-introspection, and actually physical manipulation. So first of all, one of the tips that I like, like to recommend to people is as soon as you begin to feel pressure uh, in your business, 
whether it's demands from uh, staff, clients, partners, whatever, take that moment to automatically interrupt whatever your natural reaction is and study it. What do you do by default? Do your shoulders get tense? Does your breathing increase? Do you start sweating? Uh, do you feel a general sense of anxiety? List all of it out and understand how you kind of default when these situations occur so that you know what to expect in the future. Second, you want to decide what to do instead. So if, you're, uh, if your default is to suddenly feel a sense of anxiety and to get tense in your shoulders, in your back, in whatever, in your posture, you can create your own exercise. You can go to YouTube for all I care. You can create exercises to immediately counteract that physical reaction that's happening in your body. One of the, uh, one of the tips I learned in Navy SEALs books is, um, is box breathing technique where you uh, breathe in a certain pattern, deep breaths, over and over again until you naturally force your body to calm down physically. When you calm down physically, the rest of your being goes along with it and you suddenly begin to feel better Nothing else has changed around you. All of the existing pressures still exist. The demands are still on you, both mentally and sometimes even physically, if they're people who are there in person. Uh, but you yourself have changed. You've changed your body chemistry to become uh, more resilient to those demands. Now it's a matter of habituating that so you can handle it over and over again in the future. This is just one tiny little example, but the point I'm making here on the slide and in this point is that the, the most successful entrepreneurs realize and accept with open arms the fact that pressure is going to increase as success increases. The only thing that's left to do is be able to handle yourself and keep yourself calm, relaxed, and prepared to take on the next challenge so that whatever's going on around you will not impact your productivity and you can stay strong on the road to success. Take a few minutes right now to uncover and identify the situations where you feel the pressure and what you're going to do instead so that you can make your rite of passage for more success and you can handle more pressure so you can grow further. And this will be an unbelievably powerful experience for you when you learn to implement it. So I hope these four topics, these four ideas, uh, have maybe shed some light on stuff you haven't thought about before. Uh, maybe you can go and examine some successful entrepreneurs that you really respect and admire and see some of these characteristics, see the parallels that I've uncovered today. And even if you just take one idea and run with it, I would hope that you consider this a successful investment of your time. So thanks very much for watching. I appreciate it. And I look forward to hearing from you very soon.